Zork. And that's what really got me interested in programming years ago in the early 80s. Now, Zork was a classic text adventure game. It's from a company called Infocom. They made lots and lots of different adventure games. And before I played Zork, I just wasn't interested in programming at all. But after I played Zork, I was just fascinated. How did they manage to create this self-contained world in which you could move around, you could solve puzzles, you could meet interactive characters, you could take treasures, and so on. And so I really wanted to know how this was done. And so I set myself the task of programming one. And so every spare moment I had for the next year, I was working on programming. I was using at that time a system called Turbo Pascal, which was a compiler from Borland. And it was great. It was wonderful for its day. It was a marvellous language. And I spent the next year programming my own adventure game, which was called The Golden Wombat of Destiny. To this day, I still think that writing adventure games is a great way to learn to program. And modern object-oriented languages, everything from Java, Smalltalk, Delphi, um, C Sharp on the PC, Objective C on the Macintosh, Ruby, Python, and so on. They are absolutely wonderful for writing text adventure games. And in the months ahead, I'm going to look at the fundamental techniques you'd need to write your own text adventure. And I'll use some of those languages as a basis. Now, to me, a text adventure is a bit like a book. And you play a character in it. Now, if you've only played fast action graphics games, well, that's a bit like a, a Hollywood movie by comparison with a text adventure. So there's lots of excitement, lots of action but you never really get fully immersed in the game in the way that you can in a book or you can in a text adventure. Now, I love text adventures and I would love to see a new wave of programmers coming along and expanding upon what you can do with a text adventure. You don't need to write only text. You could create your own quite innovative user interface or you could, you could add graphics or animations. Now, in my next video, I'm going to look at how you can get started with a text adventure.